Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right episode. Today is a super exciting, extra exciting day I'd say, because we are going to be planting all the tomatoes and cucumbers and all the summer crops this weekend. So I'm going to be showing you guys how I'm going to be doing all that, my strategies for trellising them, uh, my planting depth, my planting spacing, um, all the strategies I'll be using this summer. I'm going to be doing a lot of new stuff and uh, you know, still going, still doing more experimentation, trying to dial in what's the best system for me on this space. So here's all the tomatoes. So this soil here that I use for these pots, and I think it's the reason why they look so good. It's from my homemade compost, my homemade worm castings, azomite, and a tiny bit of the roots uprising foundation fertilizer, which is just like bone meal and rock dust and feather meal and just all sorts of natural things. Very happy with how healthy they look. They're just gonna go into the ground ready to go. So I'm doing some Diva burpless cucumbers. They're a vining type. Um, these are yellow pears. They're real sweet and have a lot of pop to them. They're one of my favorites. I'm trying out Amish paste this year because I wanna try selling sauce, like a sauce making kit where you can get the herbs and the tomatoes in one kit plus the Amish is supposed to be good as a slicing tomato as well, so that I'll have a red slicer, and hopefully people will enjoy that. So it'll be like a dual purpose that I can sell in different ways. So that's kind of a thing I wanted to try out. And then I've got chocolate cherries as well. You might notice it's kind of not the standard stuff of the red, yellow, orange, or the cher regular cherries, sweet 100s, all that stuff. And that's because I'm mostly selling at the farmer's market. And so my strategy was basically, you know, knowing that a lot of farmers, they're gonna have the standard tomatoes, you know, the standard cherries and all that stuff, the standard heirlooms, brandy wines and green zebras and all that sorts of stuff, people will have those. So rather than try to compete with them, um, I'll try to grow some weirder stuff that um, my customers might appreciate. Um, so, they're, so the yellow pears are really good for salad. And since I'll be doing greens in the summer, I can recommend that to them. Hopefully the Amish uh, red paste is um, also good for slicing, so they can have that. And then I'll also have chocolate cherries, which are a little stranger. A lot of people haven't tried chocolate cherries, so I'm hoping that'll entice people. We can try something new. Three beds were originally my worst beds. They had the most rocks, the most clay. They were the most hard pan. And this is a year later, and broad forking it now, we can actually get all the way in and penetrate all the way and get a full lift. So it's pretty cool to see how nice the soil has gotten after just one year. I had six months worth of crubber crops and then it had one year worth of productive crops, but here's the soil now. And just gonna keep adding compost and compost tea and worm tea and keep the soil alive. But it's pretty amazing to see what's possible in even just a short time. So in a couple more years, this stuff's just gonna be incredible. Okay, so we've got these two beds on the sides here. Broad fork, prepped and ready. We got a, a bunch of more rocks out of there. Middle bed is a lettuce bed that we planted a couple weeks ago. And we're actually gonna be interplanting tomatoes in here. So I had a bunch of lettuce that just needed to get into the ground. I didn't have any other bed. So I decided to put it here. We're gonna be ripping out a little bit of the lettuce in here and making room for the tomatoes. And then the tomatoes will grow vertically. The Lettuce will continue to grow and we'll harvest the lettuce. The tomatoes will get much bigger. At that point, they'll be pruned. So I'm gonna come back in here later and then plant some basil transplants right underneath the tomatoes. So I'll get three harvests off this bed. Lettuce, tomatoes, basil. And now it's ready to add compost to. Get a bunch of compost ready and then we're gonna mix in a bunch of nutrients uh, because these these beds are gonna be planted very intensively with crops that require uh, an intense amount of nutrients. So we're gonna be fertilizing the bed, adding compost, you'll see, and then we'll even be adding nutrients in the planting hole, and uh, once we plant the tomato, we'll be putting a, a little bit more nutrients on top of the tomato as well, on the top of the soil. So I'm gonna be adding in some oyster shell. This is long-term calcium, um, worm castings, this is some azomite, I have kelp meal, and then this is a the Roots Organic Fertilizer, which is for the vegetation stage, it's a 2-1-1, so it's a very light fertilizer. Bat guano, feather meal, alfalfa meal, fish bone meal, just all good stuff. 
So I'll just be adding in a tiny bit of each of these to the soil. You know, my kind of theory is a little bit goes a long way. And we're also going to be adding a lot into the... We're going to be putting some into the planting hole and on top of the tomato itself. So it's just going to be really rich with nutrients in there. And that'll be a great start for all the plants. Two handfuls of castings. The handful of oyster shell. This is some azomite. Rock dust. There's some kelp meal. This is actually a 102 for the fertilizer numbers. A couple handfuls in there. Organic fertilizer for, bit, for the vegetation stage of the plant. And I have another, it's called Roots Uprising Bloom. And that one is higher in phosphate, so it encourages blossom and fruit growth. Just doing a couple little handfuls of that. All right, so that's it. And then we'll just mix it up. And I love mixing with a fork like this. It makes it a lot easier because you've got the space. With a shovel, it makes it a little heavier. Now the compost I made, there's a lot of sticks. I want to take some of the bigger stuff out. I don't really want that in my bed, but unfortunately underneath the pecan tree, there's a lot of dead wood that falls, so. So this is a mix that's specific for fruiting plants or, or what? This is for plants that create summer fruit. So squash, cucumbers, tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, okra. So by, I just want, I want them to have everything available. Any nutrients that they want, it's out there in the soil. They can communicate with the life in the soil to bring it to the plant's roots. And that's it, and it's nice and mixed. So now we're just gonna dump this out onto the bed and spread it out. All right, so we're gonna add one more wheelbarrow full of compost, just because I, these guys need a lot of food and I wanna make sure they've got everything they need. And these are beds that, probably some of the worst beds out here in the market plot, so uh, I want to feed them a bit more because of that as well. So I just want to talk real quickly about the composting method I'm doing here. So I'm doing one wheelbarrow load that is compost mixed with my fertilizer and nutrient mix. And then I do one more wheelbarrow full of just straight compost. And that's gonna be all for my cucumber and tomato beds. Now this bed in between, so there'll be one cucumber here and the other cucumber is gonna be here. So there's about nine feet in between the rows here. On this bed in between, there's gonna, it's gonna be greens for my greens next uh, greens bed mixes. So here, I'm just gonna do a little bit of compost and I've got two compost piles going right now. One that is fully finished and one that is almost finished and I'm going to show the pile in a minute. So for the cucumbers and the tomatoes, all the fruiting crops, things are where the edible things are not on the ground, I used the compost that wasn't fully finished. And the compost went through the thermophilic cycle. It did reach high enough temperatures to kill off bacteria and any possible pathogens and weed seeds. But since it's not fully broken down, I'd rather have the rest of that process go on underneath the tomatoes and, and cucumbers and not cut greens where I'm going to cut them very small and people are going to eat them raw. And even though both piles are totally safe, it's just a small precaution. Um, and the nutrients breaking down over time will be really nice for the longer growing crops. So that's kind of the strategy there. Okay, so here's my compost pile that's, that's totally finished. Okay, and you can see that it's totally broken down. There's not much straw or wood chips or anything left behind. So this is what's going on the greens area for the greens mix. And then this compost pile here was used for all the tomatoes and everything. So you can tell that it is, it's fully broken down. It smells like soil. It's, it's great, lots of worms in it. But some of the straw is not fully broken down. There's a few twigs and things like that that have gotten here too. So that's why this was a little bit better for the fruiting crops. And then the last thing I'll touch on with feeding the crops is, you know, why did I give the cucumbers and the tomatoes twice the amount of compost plus a bunch of fertilizer and micronutrients versus the greens, I'm only gonna give straight compost. And this is a strategy just to conserve nutrients for what which plant uh, desires more so obviously all the all these summer fruiting crops tomatoes cucumbers eggplant uh, summer squash winter squash all these uh, fruiting crops these all require a lot of 
macro and micronutrients. So that's why I'm doubling up on these beds. Uh, greens beds, they can do with just a little recharge from some compost. Since they are just leafy greens, um, you know, the nitrogen is one of the main uh, nutrients that's going to help with the leaf growth. Obviously, there's many other nutrients, and I believe in having the full spectrum of nutrients in the soil so that the plants have the best defense systems possible. I am using my only the compost that I've made on site here. It's kind of been a challenge to, you know, only use the soil on site, so that's part of my strategy to, to, to manage how much compost I am putting on each bed. So for greens beds, I'll only put one wheelbarrow, and so far that's been more than enough fuel to keep the beds going. Um, in addition to my compost tea, compost and warm teas. So yeah, I'm pretty stoked. Was able to continue to uh, use my own soil all the way into these summer crops that I'm getting to the ground. So after this, it won't be, uh, there won't be too much heavy soil use usage. I'm done making all my transplants. I'm done feeding these. Um, so this, at the end of this weekend, we're gonna make a couple more compost piles to get everything restarted, but we'll see here. I'm, you know, I may have to end up buying soil, but I'm gonna try to hold out if I can because the longer I can go, the better. If I can sustain it here, that'd be pretty amazing. So now I'm gonna prepare a little fertilizer mix that is going to be placed in the planting hole of the tomato or cucumber, and a little bit will be put on the top of the soil as well, so that there'll be nutrients all throughout the soil for the tomato or the cucumber to get to. Now, this isn't something that you wanna do with a tree. This is something that works pretty well with the fruiting crop. I did it last season and it had great results. My, my squash right here that you're seeing are looking really healthy and I did that same method. So I'm really happy with it. So I feel like it works well for things that, um, you know, not a permanent plant. You, you don't wanna do that because then the tree has a tendency to wanna stay in that hole and not leave it and not create really good root structure. But that doesn't seem to be the case for vegetables. So this mix is gonna be very similar to what I put as the top dressing, but I'm gonna add a lot more of my worm castings in here. And yeah, I'll be doing azomite, worm castings, kelp meal. I'm gonna go heavier on the worm castings and heavier on the azomite. So I'm doing like, like two full cups of azomite and I'll do a half a bucket. It's a half a five gallon of my worm casting. You know, I'm not doing anything exact here, just simple ratios. And then I'm going to put in some more of the roots fertilizer as well. And I'm also going to take any big sticks I see out of there. That shouldn't be in a compost pile to begin with, but it was kind of unavoidable for me. You never want to bury sticks under the ground unless you're doing something like a huga culture or something like that. If you're making compost, you want it to be free of the really long burning carbon stuff like twigs. And then we'll just use five gallon buckets to easily transport it to the bed. So now the next step is just to lay out the tomatoes. Okay, so now we're prepping to plant and I've just stretched out a measuring tape here. And the tomatoes are gonna be planted every foot. And then they're gonna be off center here so that it'll expose more air and more light to each tomato and it's just a better packing efficiency. What I'm doing is just taking a hoe and making marks every foot on the opposite side. And then we're going to come back in and I wish I had a, one of those skinny planting shovels, but I don't have one yet. I need to get one. But a little like three inch or four inch planting shovel, like tree planting shovel, those would be really nice to use. Uh, that's what Curtis Stone uses. He, he uses those little tiny shovels and I think that's probably one of the best ways to do it. So I'm just going to lay this out here. Okay, so now that we got the holes dug, it's time to just put a little, a handful of fertilizer into each hole, and then we'll be planting. Yeah, I'm really bummed I don't have the smaller shovels. These holes are just way too big, too much effort, and we're digging out too much of the soil, which sucks. But I don't have another shovel right now, so it's kind of the only choice. But I'm definitely gonna, I think I'm gonna go get a shovel tonight. Because um, when I plant tomatoes in between these lettuce, I'm really gonna need a skinny shovel to, to get in there. All right, we're ready to plant now. Okay, some tomatoes ready to go in the holes. So, squeeze the pot, release the pot, loosen the roots, put it in the hole. This hole's a little bit too high, so I'm gonna make some space 
to get the plant down lower. This is too low. It's gonna hit way too high up on the plant. So I went too low, bring a little more dirt back down. I ball it again. That looks like it's gonna be right. Wiggle in some soil. Sometimes it helps to hold the root ball because you can push in a lot of soil and sometimes it'll knock it over. Or you could actually bend and snap the, the branch of the tomato. And then compress it. All right guys, so I'm back out here again today and I got what I should have bought in the first place, which is a four inch trenching shovel. And four inch is actually the diameter of my pots as well. So this is kind of the biggest shovel that I would possibly need to make my holes. And I'll do this sometimes where I'll try to save money by not buying the tool that I really need. Um, you know, it was only 26 bucks or something. And I wouldn't have had, you know, in these other beds we dug, the holes are just way too big. You know, we tore apart the soil. We are you know, messing up the soil life under there. And I should have just, you know, not have been a cheapo and just got the correct shovel that I needed to do this because I'm going to be planting tomatoes again in the future. And, you know, I just have resistance for, towards buying new things sometimes. But, you know, it's a good thing just to remind myself that sometimes it's worth it just to have the correct tool for the job. And in this case, it's very true, so. There's 39, there's my mark. There's 38, there's my mark. So I just oscillate to every side. So I'll be planting out here in the sun today because it's only gonna hit a high of 70 degrees, which means it's safe enough that I can put these in the ground and they shouldn't uh, have too much shock. If it's any hotter than 70, I would just wait till um, the end of the afternoon, or I should be planting early in the morning. All right, guys, so I just thought about something, doing something that I think is going to be really beneficial. So I still have some worm slash compost tea uh, brewing that I made a couple days ago. So what I'm going to do is spray a bunch of it in the planting holes. And what this is going to do is prime these holes with biology. Because in this tea, I've brewed it for fungal and bacterial development. So I'm gonna inoculate all of these planting holes so that when these tomatoes go in, they're gonna have the biology and fungal development that they need to communicate with in order to get the nutrients that they need and, and do all the things uh, that help create really good aerobic based soil. So I'm gonna do this to all my planting holes since I've got the tea today. And um, you know, it's not gonna be a real trial or real scientific test, but I believe that this will help the soil uh, quite a bit. So we'll see what happens and see how these grow. These tomatoes I did not do that to. I didn't spray anything in the planting hole, but I did last night. I did spray this entire thing, both the bed and the tomatoes with worm and compost tea. So if you'd like to learn more about why I'm spraying worm tea into the holes. I suggest learning more about the soil food web and soil biology. And these are completely fascinating topics um, that I'm trying to learn more about all the time. And uh, you know, you search on YouTube or the internet, um, soil food web, and there'll be lots of information about um, what's really, you know, the universe that's going on underneath the soil and starting to understand some of that. Um, because you'll be absolutely blown away by what you find when you study soil biology. It's something we really need to grasp and understand so that uh, we change the way that we're raising our plants. And um, uh, you guys should check out Elaine Ingram. She's a very famous person in the permaculture and regenerative farming world. And uh, she'll tell you all about the soil food web, teas, and all that sort of stuff. Now in this, this row right here, I'm going to have my Amish paste tomatoes and these are some lettuce seedlings that I planted I think three weeks ago. So they're about ready to start really getting bigger and the timing was a bit off because of my, my, my tomato seedlings weren't ready to get in the ground and these lettuce seedlings really needed to get in the ground so I just put them in early and with the idea that no matter what happens, I can always rip out some lettuce if there's not enough room or or the lettuce gets so big that it's casting shadow on the tomato, I'll just rip out one or two heads around it to prevent that. The other 
thing I did is I, s I selected my largest, tallest, and biggest and broadest leaf tomato for this center one as well because um, I'm gonna, when I plant them, hopefully that um, they'll be up and over all of these lettuce and then they'll take off and get ahead of this lettuce before um, the lettuce casts any shade. So that's kind of my strategy there and I will be planting some brassica family greens on the edges of my cucumber beds. I'm gonna put arugula, uh, maybe one of some of my mix. All right, <clears throat> so we're gonna plant the tomato. The soil level, level of the pot should be even with the soil level here. So I'm gonna squeeze the pot a little bit, shake it, support the stem between your fingers, push the pot out. So, you know, it's starting to get root bound here. Okay, so now what I need to do is bury it. So I need to think of the soil level needs to just come right below the first stem, just like a half inch below. So this actually needs to be much deeper. So these plants are a little bit taller, so I'm gonna just push in some more soil. And then I need to add my fertilizer. So I just wanted to show how I'm getting these roots unstuck before I put the plant in the hole. So what I'm attempting to do is just loosen the roots up. So on the bottom here, I'm just kind of tickling the bottom, massaging it a little bit. I don't want the roots to break. That's not definitely not what I'm trying to achieve. I'm just trying to loosen it up. So I'll tickle the bottom and then I'll rub side to side as I move my hand up the root ball. And that, what that does is just loosens it without breaking or damaging the roots. And also roots are very, very sensitive to light and heat. So as soon as you get out of the pot, you want to put it right into the soil. Within minutes, the roots can die and callus off and then the plant has to make more roots. That's not what we want. So we want to plant immediately. This is why I'm not taking the, the pots off ahead of time because I want to take a pot off and put it directly into the soil and cover it as quickly as possible so that I'm protecting those roots, keeping them alive and having them being nice and loose and ready to reach out and start uh, going as soon as possible. In the first stage of the plant's life in its new soil, it's got to go out and create its root structure and the plant doesn't really grow or take off until that happens. That's why you'll notice once you plant transplants in the ground, it usually takes a week or two, but after that time, all of a sudden you'll see rapid growth in the plant. And that's because it's finally established, there's no more shock, it's got a root structure that's tapped into this soil structure, and it's ready to flourish. All right, so now my lines are laid, I'm just gonna check for any more leaks, and then I'll spread these out a little bit nicer so that they're a little more proportional. Okay, and then I'm gonna also refine the edge one last time because I kind of destroyed it as I was planting. Now the lines are looking good. So now I'm watering them in for about 40 minutes, getting them these beds really wet and soaked. I'm not gonna water them often, but I, wa I will water them deeply so that I'm training the roots to go deep and seek out water to create more root structure. Then what I'm gonna do, so these beds are gonna get completely wet and soaked. That's going to cause the germination of whatever weed seeds are in this topsoil here. And I'm going to come through and just hoe it out with my little collinear hoe. And then I'm going to mulch all of my tomato and cucumber beds. Um, I'm not going to use plastic mulch, but I will use some straw mulch. And um, that's going to help suppress weeds, keep moisture in, especially as the hot summer gets on. Very small amount of organic matter will be added. And... Um, you know, will help save a little bit on a water bill. Okay, so here's what the holes look like with that trenching shovel. Works incredibly well. I can just sneak right in there in between the lettuce. That wasn't too bad. I only lost a handful of them. Obviously the timing wasn't perfect on this, but um, you know, I had to do what I had to do and I'll still be able to sell a few out of these. So, so check this out. I thought this was kind of cool. You can see the root system of the lettuce right here. All 
Okay, so we're gonna do one more cucumber, and I'm just gonna show you how I'll quickly prune it up. Uh, because what I want to do is prevent this leaf from touching the ground. When I put this um, pot soil level into the ground, most likely this leaf will be really close. And I just want to prevent any soil borne diseases from passing to that leaf because cucumbers are a little sensitive. So I'm only going to take that off only for safety measures. And then I also took off the cotyledon because those eventually rot and fall off. And I'm just gonna get them out of there. We'll just, so just doing that is just gonna help improve the overall health of the plant and keep it healthy in the long run. And I wanna keep this plant free from as much stress as I possibly can. So I wanna do all the techniques that I, that I can to make it go in there with the highest, immune, with the strongest immune system it can. Okay, so press it in, press it down, and then I'll add fertilizer to the top. And that's it. The leaves are completely off of the ground, not in danger of touching, and off to a good start. All right, guys, that's the end of the episode for today. Just wanted to show you the tomatoes once again. That we've lowered and leaned these guys one time already. We're about to do it a second time tomorrow. And I'm just now starting to harvest a lot of the fruit. You know, I've only got, I've got a little less than 10 pounds, but I'm gonna start harvesting a lot more this week. Uh, and then on my cucumbers, I've been harvesting at least like 40 a week uh, for the last couple weeks now. So uh, very, very happy with the trellis system. It's worked excellently. The plants are doing very healthy. Stay tuned, I'll be having another video about, uh, an in-depth video about pruning your tomatoes and cucumbers um, and how to prep them and get them ready for planting. Thanks again for watching and please like and share all these videos with your friends. I'll see you guys in the next video.